Mohamed Omar, sans plus tarder, si, please join us. Good evening. I hope you guys are having a good day. Good night. Let me... You guys are so beautiful. Can you look at the next person and shake his hand and say, how you doing? Can you say that? All right. I am so happy to be speaking at this uh, beautiful summit, 253 Next Generation. It actually brings my mind back to the days when I thought that one day some of us young people would be standing up and thinking about the possibilities rather than the challenge. Focusing on what can be done rather than looking at, looking at what can't be done. Seeing the opportunities in the face of challenges and obstacles. Trying to find ways to solve whatever challenge life throws at us. Rather than taking that as an excuse to making your dreams, our dreams, a reality. So, I want to start with a beautiful story which I actually like to, uh, to, to tell people whenever I stand on a stage. That is, there was a friend of mine, he loved being okay with the state school. He loved living his comfort zone. He never liked trying new things, pushing uh, the horizon and, and seeing things from a different perspective and, and putting himself in the game. He liked to watch the games, particularly the football games. He never liked to play. I was the vice versa. I liked to play. I liked to put myself in the game. I liked to bring new ideas and try find the ways to put these ideas into action. I was that kind of a little kid. You know, one of your friends could be this, or you could be that yourself. Always find a way to just bring something new to the table that people feel very discomfortable with, right? Does that happen to you sometimes? You could be one of them, you never know. If not you, your friend could be, a family member could be. Somebody out there is actually making something out of the comfort zone, something we're not happy with, something we're not feeling good with because it takes courage to go extra mile. It takes courage to think differently. It takes courage to believe in that idea in your mind. It takes courage to think differently and sell that idea to the people. It takes courage to think about solution. It takes courage to look at life from a different valid point. It takes courage. All of us don't have that. Those few who have the courage to go after what they think is right are the actual people who make it happen. Those are the people who we look at to later in life. Those are the people who we see as examples, right? My friend was called Mr. Normal. In Somali, Mr. Adi. So he lived a normal life. He was a normal young man. Uh, went to school normally, graduated from the university, just like the other people do, because it's so normal that we go to universities, schools, and then get it done, and then get a normal job, and then move, and then get married to your fiance. It, it, it's so normal that we do that, right? He got old, just like any other human being out there. And then he got all, because that's normal in life. It's okay. That's, we age at the end of the day. That story should tell us what we should not be doing, rather than what we should be doing. I have taken a beautiful wisdom out of that story because I never wanted to live normally. I never wanted to live a normal life. I wanted to live a life of adventure. I wanted to live a life of test. I wanted to live a life of, of courage. I wanted to live a life that's ready to change, that's ready to evolve, that's ready to grow. I was ready to go through anything, not just go through it, but grow through it. I never wanted to live like a normal person because being normal costs us a lot today. 
so many beautiful stuff in life. So many beautiful stuff we have in life wouldn't have been possible if we were all okay with what we have. Somebody, sometime, somewhere, thought quite differently and thought out of the box and created, brought an idea, so a challenge, and took a responsibility to bring a, uh, bring a solution to that and then made a beautiful thing out of it. The lights, one of them, microphone is another, the, another one of them, the cameras are one of them, the beautiful building we're in is another one. So, so friends, I'd like to share three blueprints I have lived when I started working on my dreams. They work it very well for me. Those blueprints, I've, I've been practicing them for the last 10 years when I started working and living and staying with my dreams, with the dream work I have dreamed in my childhood. Speaking to people, inspiring feel of young men and women, uh, talking about life and leadership, putting things into perspective and finding ways we can grow through the experience we go through every day life. So, blueprint number one, are you ready for that? Okay, blueprint number one says, just do it now. Just do it now. Many things that we could have achieved in life are never possible or are not even in our sights. You cannot see that, you cannot sense that because we kept putting that off to tomorrow. It feels like most of us are actually living, particularly young men and women, we're mostly living with the evis. So somebody comes over and says, oh, my life is going to be okay. I'm going to do right. I'm going to be okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think differently. I'm planning things differently. I'm going to take action and change this and that. I'm going to do this and that when I graduate. Oh, no, when I get married. Oh, no, when I get children. Oh, when I get a better job. Oh no, it's not that. When things go well, I would do better. You know, if I could only get that amount of money, I would have been this and that. Your, our whole life is not actually something that we can take because there is a condition that comes with that, which is if I get this, if I go there, if I become this. So, Blueprint number one says, just do it now. Get, get started with what you have. Get started with where you are. Get started with who you are. There's no perfect time that you can start things. I'm actually tired of watching life, watching and, and reacting to what life throws at us. It's actually tiring. Remember these stadiums, right? We, we all go and watch footballs and different sorts of sports. The players are way less than the audience, right? It's, it shows you that people love watching things happen rather than making things happen, right? So now we watch people graduating. We watch people going up in life, loving, uh, loved ones getting married, hardworking people getting promoted, uh, you know, your friend, doing stuff differently and getting different results as a result. We watch things happen. And then at the end of the day, we're here with a good heart, congratulating people, you know, celebrating the successes and, and, and the hard work of other people. But we forget to think one day that it's over and you're going to play and it's your time to be celebrated. It's your time to be looked up to. It's your time your name becomes a title. It's your time, young man, that you become the story yourself. In life, think is, things will happen to you. Things will happen around you. And think other things 
What happened to people you know, perhaps people you love, perhaps your loved ones, things will happen to us, things will happen around us. It's okay, but the most important thing is what happens in your mind. What happens in your mind? That thing that happens in your mind is actually what changes your life. And it doesn't happen in your mind unless you choose to go out of your comfort zone. And that starts with the feeling that it's your time. Enough is enough. I've watched enough people playing. I've watched life so much. I've been reacting to so many things in life. No, it's over. It's my time. Can you say that out loud for a minute? It's my time to take action. It's your time. It's actually your time. So unless you feel it's your time. Unless you tell yourself it's your time. Unless you take the decision with courage that it's your time. Your life ain't gonna change. It all starts with the feeling that it's your time to show up, to rise, to take action, to think about your future, to put things into action, to take action about things that matter to your life, to take a step towards what actually matters to your heart, to actually think of ways you can start living with your dreams right now. Say that again, it's my time. Say that again, it's my time. It's your time. It's absolutely your time. And if it's not your time, then what time is it? It's who else's time? I don't know. You might know that better. But I know for sure that you know it's your time. That's blueprint number one. Start doing things now, because if it's not now, it, it is never. And if it's not you, it's then who else is supposed to do that? So it's now or never. It's you or nobody else. Can you say that after me? It's now or never. It's now or never. Yes. And if it's not you, who else? It's you. That's blueprint number one, ladies and gentlemen. Take action now. We need to take action now. That's what. So blueprint number one and number two comes right after that. And it says, if you want to go high in life, you can go. Go with yourself. You can do that. But if you want to go far in life, go with people. So my blueprint number two says, learn the skill of making the most out of other people, utilizing the competence of other people, the knowledge, the competence, the skills, and the thoughts of other people. That's, you, do, you need to, to do the same for them. You need to find a way to put value into them. Find a way to work, to work with like-minded people. Work with a team. You should master the skill of a teamwork. In this fast-changing world, you need to go with a team. You need to find a way to work with people. You cannot be everything alone. You need other people to be with you on so many levels of your life. You need to master the art of a teamwork. I remember a beautiful wisdom which says, teamwork makes a dream work. If you have a beautiful dream, you need to realize the fact that you need to go with a team. You need to go with a team. Everyone who is successful in a way or another at any aspect of life, in any aspect of life, have known or have utilized it, the, 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 the fact of teamwork, teamwork, teamwork. The spirit of a teamwork can, can drive dreams into a reality. So say this again, teamwork makes a dream work. Can you say that again? Teamwork makes a dream work. You're right. Teamwork makes a dream work. And we all need to learn and master the skill of a teamwork. I remember a story about a teamwork. Uh, when we were back in the primary school, there was a beautiful wisdom which was taught to almost every young man across the Somali Peninsula. You might remember that. It was the teacher would come in front of us with a, with a stick, one stick. 
He would show us how to break that. And whenever he tries to break it, it breaks down in a second, right? It's just a stick. And then he comes back with five other sticks, puts them together, tries to break them, and he gets, it gets tough. He goes through a half time breaking them. Sometimes they don't even break. At the end, he would come with a wisdom that says, if you guys get together, if you stay together, if you find a way to stick together and work on one particular goal together, you're unbreakable. Life is, ups, life is full of ups and downs. There are so many challenges in the, uh, on your way to success, to your dreams. So they are going to break you if they get you alone. So one more time, if you, were, if you want to go high in life, go alone. You can do that. Trust your Lord. Pay, pay the price in full and in advance, and you can go there. But if you want to go far in life, you need to go with people. One more time. Teamwork makes a dream work. You're right. Teamwork makes a dream work. It actually makes dreams work faster when you go with a team. We need to master the skill of a teamwork. That's my blueprint number two. So coming to my final blueprint number three. Here's the thing. Very interesting thing. Now you feel it's your time. Now you have taken action right now. Now you believe you have to do you right. You have to trust you. You have to believe in you. You have to put you in the game. You have to take the responsibility upon you. It, you have to feel it's your time. And you have to feel it's you who has to do something to make things happen. That's number one. And number two says, go with the people. Find the right people. Look at the people. Some of the people are actually fitting your future. By the way, you don't need to go with the people who fit your past. You need to go with the people who fit your future. People who look, through, who look you through your shortcomings, through your challenges, through what you don't have, through what you cannot be, are not for you. They're not good for your health. They're not good for your progress. They're not good for your sanity because they see you through your shortcomings, right? You go with the people who actually fit your future, who value you for not what you are, but for what you can become. Those people see your competence rather than what you can do. They don't actually label you with what you cannot do. They give you the opportunity to find a way to utilize what you're good at. They fit your future. So go with the right people, go with the right people, go with the right people, find a way to work with people, teamwork. By the way, don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. You are the five people you go with, right? So somebody else said back in the days, if you think you're great, you are. If you think you can't do anything, you are. That's right. What you believe is right. What you think is right. Because what you're afraid, what, what the people you surround yourself with believe also comes into your belief. Now, if you go with, with go-getters, if you go with people who don't give in, who don't give up, if you go with people who are hardworking constantly, if you go with people who are actually working on their dreams and on their talents and on, their, uh, on, on things that matter to their lives, then you definitely are going to be one of them. You are one of them. They're impacting your life to the core. So go with a believer, go with a hard worker, go with a go-getter, go with somebody who cannot give up easily. So plea print number three says, don't give up. Now you know it's your time. You're going with the right people. You're committed. And you're taking action. You're on the course. You're not actually complaining about life. You're not complaining about the economy. You're not complaining about anything, but you're actually seeing the future. You're actually seeing the opportunities. You're actually seeing if things can be done differently, then results can be different. Now, when you have done that, you've put yourself in the sea. 
And when you go into the sea, when you started sailing, that's when you feel the depths of the waves, right? You don't see the waves. You don't actually see the waves when you are on the shore. You don't see, you only see them, but you don't feel them. You don't know how, how deep they are, how powerful they are, and how challenging they are to go through. So when you put yourself in the game, that's when challenges show up. That's when your mom sometimes lose trust in you. That's when your friends actually say to you, oh, you must be actually, you must be doing something wrong. This is unacceptable. People will actually not be happy with you. Why do you, ha why do you have to do this? Just keep it calm. I I've seen it, keep calm. Just take it easy. Life is okay. Good days are coming. Just come on, cool down. See what you have done yourself? See how embarrassing you have been to yourself? You've embarrassed it. Don't put yourself on this spotlight one more day. Sit down. Don't go to the stage again. Challenges will show up. When you take action, when you feel it's your time, when you go with the right people, when you actually commit yourself to action, to what is your goals and your dreams, challenges will show up. Critics will definitely come and stare at you. There are two critics. Actually, when you start doing an action to it, when you start stepping to what matters to you, when you put yourself into the, in the game, when you take an action, when you take a step to it, what matters to your heart, a couple of critics will show up. One actually is in you, a critic inside. You'll find your intuition telling you that it's not possible. It'll show you all the ways that things cannot be done. It'll show you all the reasons that you, you're not fit to do that. It will show you all the reasons that here is not the place to implement that. Critic insight, a negative self-intuition. That's the first fight you have to fight, which you don't have to give in or you don't have to give up. And when you are done with that, when you actually win that internal battle, that mind game, then comes the next critic, a critic outside. You'll be strange to, to around your friends. You will create this discomfort, this feeling of discomfort when you are with your friends. You would actually seem like a, seem like a widow. You would actually seem like a lost human being. You would actually seem like somebody who is basically losing his mind. It happened to me when I started my speaking career. I started speaking at the community events, but then just because in my community, it was not okay for a young man to stand up and say things the way he thinks it is. There was an age factor at a time, back in, uh, uh, about a decade ago. Speaking in public or speaking in a, in a community was about an age. They said, this young man must have lost his mind. He's crazy. But I never let that sink into my mind. You remember, uh, don't forget that as long as the ship is over the sea water, it's going to go far, as far as it wants to go. Whenever that sea water gets into the ship, it goes under the water, and the rest becomes a history, right? It's just like that. People will doubt you. Sometimes you will doubt yourself. When actually challenges show up, things will, are seemingly not possible, and you will lose focus, you lose sight of your goals, and it will all start working against you. But hold on, one more minute, one more day, one more week, one more month, one more year. Hold on. It's going to work your way. God sees your hard work. God sees how much you have put in. And he's not going to actually make your hard work go waste. He's on your side helping you through. Trust him and trust the process. Love the process as much as you love the result. Don't just love, fall in love with the result. I hate the process. It doesn't work that way. It works the other way around. Love the process as much as you love the result. Don't give 
up. Don't give in. Sometimes your mommy will lose trust in you. Sometimes your friend will tease you for what you do. Sometimes you won't be able to see a bright future for yourself. Sometimes you will doubt yourself to the core. Sometimes you will see all the reasons that things are not working your way. It's just one more step away from stopping. But that's the time. The light is the brightest in the darkest of times. In the times of doubt, in the times of uncertainty, in the times of self-doubt, in the times of, of, of financial crisis, in the times of health crisis, in the times of family crisis. So hold on there. Don't give up. Don't give in. Hold on there. Keep up the hard work. Keep up the focus. Keep up the late night work. Keep up the early mornings. Keep up reading. Keep up playing the game hard. Your title should be and never give up. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving in. I'm, I'm paying the price in full and in advance. I'm not actually, I'm actually trusting the process as much as I trust the re good results are on the way. I'm not, I'm not giving up, bro. Uh, and the course is long as it needs. Until I produce meaningful results, I'm not giving up. That should be the title of your game. So, final one, let me say it again, is don't give up. Number two says, go with the people. In Somalia, it becomes in the money. Igema. It becomes in the money. Yeah, you go with the people, right? So, in the money. In the money. And number three says, has leaving. It's me leaving you. Yes, sir. You don't have to give up. You're not giving up. One of my mentors used to say, it's not over until I win. It's your time. It's your time. And that's all I have to say. I love you guys very much. It's been an honor and a total pleasure for me to be speaking to you and to be in this beautiful city of Djibouti. Until soon, I love you guys very much.